Hi, Peter Charles here, folks for life, fly fishing. And today let's talk about presenting streamers. Because I've seen a lot of people do the same thing and I've done the same thing, is to approach streamer fishing as if it's a very simple thing that we don't really don't have to think about. Just cast it out there, strip it back, cast it out there, strip it back. That's all you do, right? Well, there's an awful lot more to streamer fishing than just that simple cast out, strip back. Uh, there's lots of different techniques and approaches we can use, and there's lots of things to really actually think about it, to do a good job and be effective as a streamer fisherman. So I've got a list here we're going to go through, and uh, I'll show some examples. But the, the, the top two is what are we chasing in the way of species, because that dictates the differences. And we'll also be concerned with what kind of prey are we trying to imitate. Uh, are we looking at um, minnows? Are we looking at crayfish? We're looking at something like leeches, or maybe a, a, a large insect that swims well, like a helgramite. I mean, I, you know, we can call those nymphs, but you can present them like streamers as well. So we've got those issues, and then underneath that, we've got you know, casting angle and current speed. You know, how fast is the current moving? Are we going, you know, 90 degrees upstream? You know, 135 degrees, or are we going to go 45 degrees downstream? You know, what's our casting angle? And, you know, the current speed and where the current changes, you know, is it fast over here, slow over there? Those sorts of things become quite critical. Uh, you know, we're also going to be looking to how it work around visible structure. You know, one of the runs I like to fish is a big boulder right in the middle of it, and there's always bass around that boulder. So you've got to think about how you're going to work that in. Uh, of course, the type of fly we're using, you know, it's big, little, sparse, you know, bushy. Uh, how deep we want to, you know fish it or do we want to fish it near the surface what kind of movement do we want to give to it or, you know or we just want to let it swing and then there's a stripping speed and how long or short our strips are you know the the fly line type you know intermediate floater full sinker and the, the leader length i mean that all goes into the mix and i think sometimes a lot of people don't think of that because streamers are simple cast it out strip it back right what else is there to do so let's get looking at some examples here. And uh, I'm going to start off with my brown trout ream, weamer. And I'm going to cast it across the current. So you can see it's gone right across that main current street seam into some slow water. And so as soon as the line lands into that current seam, it's going to start to be pulled. Even though it's a full intermediate line, uh, it, full intermediate head, I should say, um, it's still going to get pulled by the current. So once it starts pulling, it's going quite quickly. So what I'm doing now is I'm letting it swing, giving it a strip. Strip. It's a very deliberate pause because the current is giving some speed to the fly. So I don't want it moving too fast. If I'm stripping like mad, that fly would be going way too fast. So I'm ca uh, stripping according to the current. And then as it comes out of that, it moves into slower water. And now my stripping speed goes up because the current has dropped. So I'm basically keeping the speeds roughly the same. But there's a little subtle behavior difference going on with the fly. The fly was coming across a bit more and then as it goes into the slower water, it's heading upstream. And before it was, you know, swing, strip, swing, strip, now strip, 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 strip. Often when you make a change in direction, speed, or the, the, the stripping frequency, it's at that moment where there's a change that fish get interested and go after it. So you see, as soon as I start to strip quickly, uh, the fly comes into the slow water and bang, there's a fish right there. So it's an example of the, you know, I went from that slow pause strip, pause strip to a, a faster strip and we got about a one pound bass come along and whack it. And uh, there's the brown trout weamer that I was using for it. Now, another point. If we're using a big streamer, which imitates a large bait fish, they swim well. So you can use long strips. You can use fast strips. You know, you can really move that. If you're using a little tiny streamer, yeah, they move in little little short darts where your strip should be a little dink, 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 dink. And so the stripping length and the stripping speed is proportional to the fly that you're using. Because small bait fish don't swim like big bait fish. So, you know, that's something else to keep in mind, is don't always make the strips the same way. Um, I had one out, one out with a friend, 
and I think I got about, I don't know, 15 fish and he got two. The primary difference was he was using a small fly in really long strips and I was using roughly the same size fly and just doing little poke strips. And that seemed to be the difference. The fish were hitting my fly, not his. We were fishing the same water, basically the same fly, same depth. And the difference in the speed, and that was it. So, as I say, keep that in mind. You've got to think of it, you know, the size of the offering. Now, here's again the same thing. The current is so fast along the bank that I don't have to strip at all. I can just let it swing. But since it comes out, I have to start stripping. And that's exactly what I do. I let it come out of the fast water and I start stripping. And as soon as it crosses that margin, bang, there's a fish. As soon as you go from the swing to the strip, there's a change, change of direction, change of speed, change of motion, and the fish is there. Okay, this is uh, my uh, Twitch fly. It's rubber legs. Um, you can say, that's not a streamer. It's more of a bug. But, you know, you couldn't make that into anything. But the thing is, I fish it with motion as opposed to a, a nymph, which is dead drifted. I will dead drift this to a certain extent, but I am giving it motion to get those rubber legs moving. And so I'm casting uh, uh, across the stream and slightly upstream. So you can see the difference there. The left arrow is diagonal, sorry, perpendicular to the current. And the right arrow is, you know, heading upstream, what, about 25, 30 degrees roughly. So that's roughly my cast. And I am going to strip, but all I'm doing is staying in contact with the fly and giving the fly just a little bit of motion and just to make those rubber legs move. And then bang, there's a fish. I lose it. Okay, get the fly back out there, make a cast, put it back out and do the same thing. Now, the small strips, as I say, they're not really pulling the fly towards me. It's what it's doing is moving those rubber legs and keeping contact because I cast upstream, I have to retrie retrieve or recover line to keep a, a tight line to the fly. And that's what I did there. And uh, that, that one I landed, I didn't lose it. So basically what I'm doing is I'm casting upstream uh, and it's sort of a dead drift with a little bit of sideways motion. And that's just enough to make those rubber legs quiver. And you don't want it too dead drift because you can end up with, these are way to fly, so you can end up on the bottom if you're not careful. So, but you want to be close to the bottom as, as much as practical and it just dead drifting along with a little bit of motion. So I'll release that one. Now I'm going downstream with the same fly. Now here's the problem when working a slow pool downstream, if you just let that swing, what happens is rubber legs will get squished into the body. They may, they may be out a little bit depending on current speed. The faster the current, the more they'll be crushed inwards. So by doing what I'm going to do here, I'm going to swing it very, very slowly in a slow pool and I'm going to pulse it. So every time I relax on the line, those rubber legs will open up. So they're closing, opening up, closing, opening up, and there's a fish on the next cast. So the fly is almost dead drifting at first and then it starts to swing. But with the pulse, it gives a chance for those rubber legs to move. Otherwise they'd be, as I say, they'd be squished back. So that depends on current speed and this current probably not, but in faster currents, yeah, those rubber legs will be pushed down. Okay, here I'm casting upstream with a brown trout weemer and some of my casts were almost you know, straight upstream. This one was at a bit of an angle uh, and I'm retrieving back. So I have to retrieve quite quickly uh, to give life to the fly because if I retrieve it at the speed of the current, it'll look dead. Uh, and so that's an important part. So I'm going to start really stripping it here. Now, the other thing that's important is I'm using a floating line and I don't normally fish streamers with a floating line all that much. Uh, streamers like my brown trout weemer. The reason why I'm using a floater in this situation is I want that fly to be high. And the important reason is a bait fish doesn't charge straight at the mouth of a bass. And if you run your fly straight out of fish down at its height, you, you know, you bring the fly down and you're pulling it downstream and you're going straight at the fish, they'll, they'll take off. They won't stick around. That's not natural. Plus the fact your line is going to be right, going right by them, which is not good either. That could make them move. So by having it right up in the water column and it's going downstream, that, uh, that's an interesting thing for a fish to look up and see that going over his head. 
and they'll take a crack at it as this one does here. Um, you know, I had picked out two or three out of that pool just doing this and uh, both of them were there around about that pound and a half. Nice, you know, pleasant sized bass. Good to, uh, you know, make sure it makes it worth your trip. So, as I say, you've when you're dealing with streamers and bucktails, you've got to move them at a good pace for them to look alive and look like they're worth eating. And when you're casting upstream, that means you're really stripping, you know, because the current is working against you instead of working for you. So we're going to switch now. We're going to go to, uh, after carp, and we're going to use a crayfish pattern, which has to be fished along the bottom, which means it has to be fished relatively slowly, but you have to give it movement. So what I'm kind of doing here is I've cast across stream with the floating line, uh, a little bit downstream, a head in front of the carp and beyond it. So as the current brings the fly down, it's also the belly and the fly line is pulling the, the crayfish fly towards the carp. And then I'm putting in a little, few little pokes and a few little strips just to make it dart. And uh, one of the things I'll do is if, if the carp is mudding, I will pull it right through the mud plume and put some velocity on it like it's trying to flee. And you'll watch about a 10-pound carp chase your fly. So that really gets interesting when that happens. And you see, I, can, I saw him move on it, and I picked it up, and away we went. We were on. So different species... I'm fishing them a different way. Uh, I'm not trying to uh, do everything the same for each type of fish I'm fishing for. And you can see the crayfish pattern in its mouth. That's the tail of the crayfish sticking out. So change of species, change of type of fly, different current speeds, different casting angles. You've got all these options to, to use when you're out there streamer fishing. So just don't go down, cast, you know, 45 degrees downstream and strip it back. Yeah. Yeah, you'll catch fish doing it. But you can catch an awful lot more if you give some thought to the current, how it's working, what the structure's like, whether it's fast here, slow there, uh, you know, whether you should be presenting high, low, broadside, you know, butt end of the fly onto the fish, downstream, upstream. These are all different things you can do. And uh, just take a look at the situation. And most, of, most importantly, match the fly to what you're doing. Uh, because I showed you three different styles of fly here, and I fished them three different ways. So and you don't always do exactly the same thing when you're changing to different types of flies. Be prepared to change your approach as well. So give that some uh, thought. I mean, streamer fishing has more to it than first looks like and uh it makes it fun i enjoy streamer fishing it's and uh usually get the big fish that way so give it a try cheers look at that right off the bat they love this one